With the extra point, this is Eric McKinney joined by Greg Katz. Greg, it looked like going into last year, USC was going to have to figure out that left tackle spot when Elijah Vera Tucker opted out. He swoops back in, saves the day, uh, it is just a real steadying force at left tackle for USC. That's not going to happen this year. Elijah Vera Tucker, he's going off to the NFL, uh, deservedly so. Clay Helton said going into spring ball, he threw four names out there that they're really going to look at at left tackle. And that's returning right tackle Jalen McKenzie uh, is a possibility to flip over. And then you've got three guys from that 2020 recruiting class, and that's Cortland Ford, Ford, Casey Collier, and Jonah Monheim. Those are the four names that Clay Helton threw out. Go ahead and call your shot. What happens at left tackle for USC this year? Well, first of all, the fact that Clay Helton did name names, so to speak, pretty much limits the field. Uh, it also tells me that, uh, quote, help from the transfer portal is not going to happen at this particular time. But that's not to say that after spring practice, something could happen, because after spring practice, we're going to see a lot of movement across the country from guys who think I should have been starting after spring. And, you know, they're 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 ruining my chances for the for the league in the future. So. We're only going by really what we see this spring. And I think the four candidates, uh, since he named them, were probably the names that everyone was looking at. The question is, is who fits best where? Now we know that Cortland Ford has minimal time of playing left tackle. So of the, the younger kids, he's the one you would say is gonna get the best shot. Uh, Jalen McKenzie to me was a workmanlike player. I don't think he's uh, a left tackle but he certainly should get the opportunity to prove that he could go there just like a, a Vera Tucker actually proved. But see, the, Vera Tucker was a left tackle at, in high school, so he had some background in it. Uh, you know, I think that Monham was probably of the three younger players, the one that probably was the most intriguing in the sense that his rankings were higher uh, as a four-star. Uh, Collier, of course, <laughs> is a mammoth tackle. In fact, I, I was looking at the roster and uh, from last uh, season, uh, he apparently has grown some because Helton says he's what, 6'9", 317. That's a big human being. Now, whether he's agile enough to play out on the edge on the left side, nobody's going to want to know that answer more than Keaton Slovis because the left tackle is the insurance policy for the blind side of a quarterback. So, if you put me on the spot and said, what do I actually think before the, you know, before we see what happens and let's face it, uh, Clay McGuire is going to have a big say on what anything happens because it's going to be his opinion that that really counts. So I'm going to say that McKenzie stays at right tackle when it's all said and done. Uh, I'm going to go uh, just initially with Cortland Ford at left tackle initially, but I would say, keep an eye on and Monham. As far as Collier goes, uh, he could be, in my opinion, maybe the surprise of the three uh, because he's so big and, you know, you can't coach big. He's already big, but whether he's athletic enough to play the left tackle spot, we don't know. But what we also don't know is maybe Cortland Ford starts at left tackle, but maybe somebody gets moved to guard. So we don't know. Uh, what we do know is they're going to give every opportunity to all the players, even the ones that weren't mentioned, to mix and match and see where they all end up. I ultimately land pretty pretty close to where you are. I, I think leaving McKenzie at, at right tackle likely ends up happening. It, it it would be tough to get to have both your tackles kind of learning new spots at, at the same time in, in this lineup. Uh, but but again, they're going to kind of shake things up and and figure out the best five and you know that they are going to take as much advantage of having spring ball this year w without having it last year. Again, Clay McGuire is, is a new offensive line coach, so he didn't go through, you know, not having spring ball with this group last year. But, you know, SC is, is absolutely looking to take advantage of every second that they're out there on the field this spring to find the right answers uh, along that offensive line. Again, the, the idea of McKenzie staying at right tackle kind of works for me. And, and the guy I'd, I'd bring up too, the first guy up at left tackle is, is your guy, Cortland Ford. I, I think he has a chance. The question on him coming out of high school, it, it really wasn't talent. There was some injury and, and those kind of issues. But 
this guy can play and and he is good and he is as dedicated as anybody on the team uh, in terms of the weight room and, and what we saw him kind of doing individually uh, last spring, last summer, when, when all the, the guys had to go out uh, on their own and kind of figure out their own workouts uh, by themselves. This is a guy that, that can play. And I think he has a very, very good shot at grabbing that left tackle spot. Casey Collier is, is the interesting one to me. Uh, if you line these three guys up when they first got in, I think he was clearly number three of that group in terms of guys you expected to play early. But like you said, that size, the other two, you can so easily see, okay, we can find you a spot at guard and, and we can move you inside. If he's really checking in at, at six foot nine, 317 pounds, that's, that doesn't feel like a guy that, that you could move inside. And again, maybe it works out where the younger guy could play right tackle uh, in Collier and, and maybe McKenzie could move to left tackle there to, to put kind of a veteran in that spot. But uh, my eyes at first are, are going to Cortland Ford. I, I want to see what he's done kind of this offseason and, and how he's developed and how he looks uh, at left tackle. And again, it's hard to not go with Jonah Monheim. He's a guy that was kind of familiar being the Southern California prospect. Uh, we saw him a little bit in that Washington State game, the same time that we saw Ford uh, when those two freshmen last year had to kind of step in and, and play a little bit. So, no, it's not getting Elijah Vera Tucker back. You don't have that at left tackle and everything's going to be a major question mark uh, without him there. But I do think there are, are pieces um, to doing that. Again, if I have to call my shot right now, months out when, like you said, with the transfer portal, you, you could see whole roster shift this summer with how quickly guys can jump in and out of that thing. Uh, but, I, but I'm looking forward to seeing what Corlin Ford can do. Uh, at left tackle for USC. But again, looking forward to seeing what a lot of guys can do in, in that competition there at left tackle. Well, I think one of the wild cards that we have to look at is the is the addition of first-year offensive line coach, uh, Clay McGuire. This is a guy that is trained in this offense. Uh, he's a person that obviously has the ear of, uh, you know, Graham Harrell. So there's not going to be any, uh, you know, let me feel each other out to see how we all relate, communicate to each other. What kind of input does McGuire have as far as blocking schemes or the running game in general? I think you would probably get a unanimous vote uh, that it has to get improved. It's got to be at the very least workmanlike and productive uh, for you know a myriad of reasons. But keep an eye on McGuire because you know he's going to be just like Drevno, you know. Again, you can't knock Tim Drevno. He produced two first round draft picks, or at least two probable first round draft picks. You know, maybe it's the recruiting, who knows? Uh, but the bottom line is all eyes are going to be on McGuire now because it's going to be his evaluation and recommendation to uh, Graham Harrell and to Clay Helton on who he thinks best fits. As, in fact, McGuire did say that he has been tweaking the offensive line. Uh, schemes or what have you uh and giving input so we know right there that something has has uh, evolved how much and what do we see that's what's going to make spring ball and the scrimmages so interesting and, and it would be extremely difficult to argue that finding an answer the right answer at left tackle is not the biggest question facing this usc team that that is a a massive uh task on hand for Clay McGuire, for Clay Helton, for Graham Harrell, for, for the entire USC offense, and then by extension, the entire USC team uh, heading into this 2021 season.